whichever the way it is, as far as we're concerned, we need to tell it to Jesus. 393. Are you weary? Are you problem for us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What shall be tomorrow? I plan to do this. Maybe I can do this. I got something else to do, whatever it might be. And you get anxious about what shall be tomorrow. Well, have a little talk with Jesus and everything will be all right. Good to be in the house of the Lord. And I want to invite you to turn back in your hymnal uh, to number um, 165. The Haven of Rest. 165 <laughs>
Take your Bibles this evening and be turning with me to the book of Ezekiel and the 10th chapter. Book of Ezekiel in chapter 10. Tonight we'll be dealing with thoughts from verse 5. After having covered glorious thoughts from the first four verses, and particularly last week, the in the week before the week concerning the cherubim being on the right side, <laughs> what a good place to be on the right yeah. side, and then last week the appearance of God's glory and noticing some facts about that, that the God's glory had moved from the cherubim to the door to the threshold and, and over the threshold, of course, the glory of God uh, filling, filling the house, the saint, sanctuary, the temple, and the court as well. So tonight, let's read verse 5. That brings us up to date. And verse 5 says, And the sound of the cherubim wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. What is that? These wings of the cherubim made a sound as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. Yeah. Almighty God, El Shaddai. This is El, Sh El Shaddai, and it is the sound of his voice that these wings make. Well, as we consider that sound, would it have been a dreadful sound? Think about the context of the last few chapters and 
The fact that judgment is coming, and, and this is preceding the judgment, would this have been a dreadful sound? Would it have been a fearful sound? Some, yes. With their wings? Yes. Well, Some. as the voice of the Almighty, when he speaketh, Huh. Turn with me uh, briefly, and we'll be coming back uh, to this psalm uh, later on, Lord willing. But Psalm, the 29th chapter. Psalms chapter 29, and, and there are several verses that, that deal with uh, the voice of God in, the, in this psalm. But we just want to look for right now, verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. Now this is talking about in the storm, in the, in the rains, in the waters. <laughs> Did you ever think about that loud thunder, that loud clap of thunder that we hear out there? That being God that thundereth? Yes. God that thundereth? Upon the waters? Uh, and we've all heard oh, the lightning that just is kind of grad, or the thunder that is just kind of gradually building, you know, and go, goes from gradual to louder, you know, and no big deal, rumbling, you know, and, and so forth. But when it goes bang, it startles you, doesn't it? Amen. Talking to my granddaughter today, FaceTime. And she told about them being up to the lake yesterday and a storm come up. And, and he, she said the thunder was really loud and scared us. <laughs> we were afraid we were going to die. Yeah, that's from the lips of a child. But I've been in some pretty thunderous storms and they can be a little fearsome be dreadful be a little fear fearful uh turn with me to the book of job the book of job in chapter 37 job chapter 37 and i want to read verses one through five if I'm not mistaken, this is a lie who's speaking here. And uh, what he has to say is concerning the Almighty. Mm -hmm. El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. Jehovah. He said, At this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of his place. He says, At this, what I'm about to tell you, at this also my heart trembleth hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth he directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth I just want to pause for a minute. You, you know, uh, we got people today that they, they want to know a reason for everything. And all they're doing is looking for the reason for everything. Well, I can tell them the reason for this. I can tell them the reason for the lightning and the reason for the thunder. They want to uh, explain it away by the, well, you see that, that electricity that comes uh, shoots out of the sky and it divides the atmosphere apart and then when the atmosphere comes back together it makes a big loud clap, you know. And, and they fail to see the hand of God in it. Because they're all worried about the explanation of, of how this phenomenon happens. Well, I'll tell you how it happens. It happens at the direction of Almighty God. He says so, right? Yeah, it's God thundering. Amen. You see. Now we go on. He directeth it un under the whole heaven 
and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, oh, with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. <laughs> That's the voice of God. I trust that he, when, we, when we hear the thunder, and maybe yet tonight before the night's over, that we'll hear it again because of the storms that are going through now. But, but I, I trust that we'll think of, that's God thundering. Amen. That's the power of God and the excellency and the marvel, mar, marvelous God. There's talking to us. Israel recognized it, did, did they not? Remember in the book of Exodus in chapter 19 and, and along about verse 16, they came to Mount Sinai and the mount was all on a smoke. And, and it began to thunder and lighten and the voice of God thundered forth from the mount. It was so bad that, that when God got done giving them the Ten Commandments in the 20th chapter and, and verse 18 and 19, that they told Moses, they said, we want you, Moses, to talk to us. We don't want God to talk to us lest we die. See, they, were, they were afraid. It was dreadful and fearful. And they thought they were all dead men. You see. Turn with me to another occasion in the book of 2 Samuel. And Samuel called God to speak marvelously with his voice and thunder. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Remember... Samuel's growing old here, and Israel's tired of judges and prophets and priests, and they want a king. They want to be like all the other nations around them. They want to have a king to rule over them. And notice what we have in verse, uh, let's see if I got the right chapters. Chapter 12. And let's uh, look at verse 16. Second Samuel 12. I, I think I got the wrong chapter. Wrong book. I think it's 1 Samuel. Yeah, it is 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 12. There. It wasn't, it wasn't lining up in the right place in my Bible, and I, <laughs> you know, that's a benefit of using the same Bible, you know, uh, yeah. over and over. You get to know where these passages are. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 12. And notice what Samuel says in verse 15. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall... The hand of the Lord be against you, as if was against your fathers. As it was against your fathers. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing, which the Lord will do before your eyes. Well, it's not a new thing. He'd done it previously. He'd done it on Mount Sinai. But look and see what the Lord's going to do here. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have 
done in the sight of the Lord and asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. <laughs> would you? Yeah. Would I? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would. The voice of the Almighty spoke, and it was fearful. It was dreadful. And they feared greatly. Now, the noise, the noise of their wings <laughs> was heard even to the outer court. I just imagine with this kind of, of noise uh, as the voice of the Almighty, it was more than just the outer court of the people. It was probably heard all over Jerusalem and all over the region round about. For the Lord's voice in his judgments cries in the city. That's our text. The voice of God's judgment is crying in the city of Jerusalem. Is crying from above the ch cherubim. The wings of the cherubim are moving. The voice of the Almighty is sounding. It's thundering throughout the temple, throughout all the court of the people. I won't tell you what some of the commentators, that's neither here nor there, uh, as far as the points that we're making. But you understand that this outer court had more reference to, to the court of Gentiles, proselytes. Gentiles who proselyted to the Jewish faith and religion. And prom as Ruth did, promised to uh, follow the Lord, their God, and uh, the ways of the Lord, their God. And... and abide by their rules and their customs, you see. But the Lord in his judgment is crying in the city so that those which do not hear might hear. Now, I want to go back to Psalms, chapter 29. And Try to read it carefully. It's just 11 verses. <laughs> Psalms 29 and verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. We that, we that hear, we that have heard and we hear, we say amen to them. We're commanded to give glory unto the Lord. Amen. We're to give glory unto the Lord for his might. And, and this is going to express to us some of the characteristics of just his voice. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Yes. Think about that. Think of that. Yeah, doesn't have a sila there, but it's a good place to pause, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Now notice the next verse. He not only breaketh up the wood, 
woods with the power of his voice, he maketh them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. Now Lebanon is a mount in, in Israel, mm -hmm. and Syrian is the uppermost tip of that mount. And it says he makes them to skip like calves, young calves. Yes, the Florida's big on cattle, and of course I grew up in farm country, and I've seen young ones, young cattle, young horses, newly, you know, just still, still, uh, still being nursing, and, and so, and, and they like to kick up their heels <laughs> and dance around. And the psalmist says he he makes the mountains to. To skip around like the cows. Wow. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. All according to, to his will, according to his purpose. Yes. Amen. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth every one speak of his glory. Wow. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever the lord will give strength unto his people the lord will bless his people with peace Amen. those that hear <laughs> Amen. he makes them to hear all oh, the wonderful sounds of the voice of the lord god almighty just consider that these weather phenomena that he mentions here in this psalm, all the all the weather patterns here on earth. Consider the various weather patterns, the storms that are moving through now, and the ones that came through yesterday, and the ones Monday, Monday, and everything. And then uh, not just here in Florida, but but he directs the weather the world over. According to his will and purpose. Think about that. Where did they come from? Where did they come from? Well, from what I said tonight, we would say, well, they came from the hand of God. Based on what I've said tonight. Yes. yes. But why? Consider why. Why? Do you realize that before Noah's flood, they didn't exist? They did not exist before Noah's flood. So they speak to us of judgment, of God's judgment. Every time we hear that thunder in the sky, we ought to think, that's there because God judges sin. Amen. God judged sin with a great flood. Destroyed all but eight souls who were safe in the ark. Yes. The arms of Jesus. Safe in the arms of Jesus. We sing that song. Amen. Safe in the arms of Jesus. But not only does the lightning and the thunder and these storms and the, the, the world uh, tornado warning up in nor uh, north, of, north of the Cape uh, today, uh, 20 miles north of the Cape uh, today, <laughs> the tornadoes, the hurricanes, all these things, 
speak of God's judgment. Amen. But they also speak of something else besides God's judgment. They speak of God's mercy. Amen. Do they not? Yes. They speak to us, God is not destroying all of mankind as he did in the great flood. Right. Not yet. They never do it with flood again. Or we have localized floods that kill people and destroy properties and so forth. But not the world over. As it did in Noah's day. Yes. The next time we see that lightning, we hear that thunder. We can think of the judgment of God, but we have God's merciful. God's merciful because he spared me. He spared you. Didn't destroy us all as he did in the flood. But there's coming a day. There's coming a day when God will thunder. Turn with me the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians Got where I was where I was turning to. Second Thessalonians, chapter one. In verse seven. And to you who are troubled, <laughs> the thought there is primarily because of persecution is coming on us because of this wicked world and the spirit of Antichrist that already even now does work and exist. You see, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he's not taking vengeance on us. taking vengeance on those that know not God. Amen. That have not obeyed the preaching of the gospel. If you would, turn with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 19, and, and, and we'll look at that day that, that the letter to the Thessalonians is talking about. That great day. Chapter 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven open. Behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yes, yes. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written. Let me pause there for a minute. The many crowns? What do you suppose the many crowns were on his head? <laughs> With the crowns back in chapter 4 of Revelation that are thrown at his feet and saying, Thou art worthy. <laughs> Thou art worthy to receive glory and honor. Majesty. That's the crowns that we've been given down here for faithful service and at the, ju uh, at the uh, uh, judgment seat of Christ when, when we receive the, the rewards for the works done in the flesh. And those crowns are crowns that we'll toss at his feet. Amen. Saying, Thou art worthy. That no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. What is that? What is the white linen, fine linen, white and clean? What is that? Well, back up 
a few verses that tells us it's the righteousness of the saints that, that the bride is adorned in. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Notice that. Mm. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Mm. You see, this is the wrath of God coming upon those that know not God. Mm. And that refuse to bow to him. In fact, they've gathered together to do war against him. And we're going to look at that in just a minute. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. There's none greater than he. No, not among kings and no, not among lords. He's the greatest. He is thy I am. And I saw an angel standing. In the sun. And he cried with a loud voice saying. To all the fowls. That fly in the midst of heaven. Come. And gather yourselves together. Unto the supper of the great God. That ye may eat. The flesh of kings. And the flesh of captains. And the flesh of mighty men. And the flesh of horses. And of them that sit on them. And the flesh of all men both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he delivered them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. That two-edged sword that divides asunder. Out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. What is this battle known as? What battle is this? What war is this? Oh, it's the war of the nations. It's the, where all the nations are gathered together against, against him. Against the Christ and all those who name Christ. They gathered, if I, I didn't look this up, but they're gathered, if my recollection serves me correct, to the valley of Jehoshaphat. It's known as the battle of Armageddon. Amen. Turn with me to the, the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 16. Look at verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. That's one we just read about in Revelation, the 19th chapter. They're all gathered together there to do battle against him that rides on the white horse. The one who has the name written faithful and true. King of kings and Lord of lords. Behold, I come as a thief. <laughs> oh, he comes as a thief to them. They're not expecting him to be coming. They think they're doing battle against his people, particularly the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. yes. the remnant of Israel. 
Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Notice. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Amen. I believe it's uh, in, in the book of Psalms talks about, about his, the, the cup is, is red with wine. That is, it is, it, it is red with the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Every Stone about the weight of a talent. Wow. How would you like to get hit with one of those stones? 125 pounds. Yeah. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. Oh, I can't imagine it. 125 pound hail falling out of the sky? Yeah. Wow. Notice the voice and the thunderings and so great, so terrible, so fearful. Amen. Thank God I'm not going to be there. Amen. Only with the one who's doing battle against them. I'm going to be with the conqueror, with the victor. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. You see. Amen. How about you tonight? Amen. How about you? Are you going to be with the Lord? Yes, amen. Coming out of heaven yes. to do battle against those that have gathered to do battle against him and find themselves to be no match for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, amen. the one who is faithful yes. and true. Amen. Think about that next time you think about the sound of the wings of the cherubim. Think about that the next time you see lightning and hear thunder in the sky. Think about that the next time you hear of a tornado or experience a tornado or the hurricanes come. Yes, they all speak of the judgment of God. They speak of God's mercy as well. Shall we have a word of prayer? Our dear, gracious, heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the time that we have to spend in your word tonight. We're thankful, dear Heavenly Father, to, to see the, the glory of your majesty and the, the glory and, and the power of your might. Oh, I'm so thankful, dear Heavenly Father, that I experienced the display of your power and your might and salvation yes. and not to damnation Amen. for we've just read and gotten a glimpse a small glimpse it is of the great power that shall be wielded at the battle of Armageddon so thankful dear Heavenly Father that I'll not be there but because there is such a battle and the promises of God are true it ought to encourage us yes. to be faithful, to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who know not Christ. 
Bless us tonight, dear Heavenly Father. Bless the Grace Baptist Church. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we have Romanian newsletter. And I was going to see if Brother Mike wanted to read that. You want to read this, Brother? You haven't, I know you haven't had a chance to look it over. Uh, you want to read this before we go into our prayer request? <clears throat> Dated May 12th, 2020. Greetings in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mission work. I normally start this paragraph by saying that the services continued as usual in Boxa and, and in all the mission points. I say this because I always thought, looking back at the completed month, that one of the greatest accomplishments and blessings is to have been able to have good services everywhere on a regular basis. These troubled and abnormal times caused by this pandemic showed all of us what a great blessing is for the congregation to be able to meet Amen. as usual. He has that in parentheses. One of the lessons the Lord teaches each one of us everywhere in the world is to treasure the assembly of the saints and to take church services more seriously than ever before. Amen. On Friday, May 15th, our two-month lockdown will expire and the government will begin to relax the restrictions. So far, the Lord preserved our health and we have access to the basic necessities. None of the brethren that were highly exposed by working in the hospital or in healthcare supply chain got sick. The general health of all of us was good and even those that needed to go see their doctors were okay. We were very thankful for this. We did have a severe lockdown because Romania was in high danger of large scale outbreak. While we are much worse than our neighbors, the pandemic was contained well and the worst case scenario did not happen. We thank and praise the Lord for this. We have been in touch with the brethren and churches in many parts of the world. There are difficulties everywhere but our hearts go out especially to our brethren in Peru who are much afflicted by this pandemic. Pastors and church members died. Others are still sick and a great many are uh, destitute and have critical and urgent needs. Please bring our brethren and our sister churches in Peru to the throne of grace. Literature work. We continued to work in the print shop or I should say Miriam and Miriam did. RL wasn't able to work or wasn't able to come because he lives in Timisoara, 80 kilometers away, and he couldn't travel to Boxa because of the lockdown. He helped me with the formulating of the editing of materials that needed to be printed or that will be published in electronic format. We will resume the normal work in the print shop and the sending out of literature on May 18th when Orel will be able to come. Sending support to us. We wish to thank everyone for their prayers and support. We are still in the adjustment period after we started receiving the support directly here in Romania. I know that the supporting churches are adjusting to the new way of sending the support, and we're adjusting too by trying to find the best way to minimize the losses during the transfer fees and exchange rates. Last month was challenging for us as we ended it in the red. Usually, when this happens, I try to cover the difference from the personal support, but this time we had a big deficit, the biggest I can recall, and our support was already down, so we had to supply the needs by accessing the funds sent for May. We're running low this month, but we're trying hard not to get into the support sent for next month, so we can get back to normal or to the new normal as soon as possible. Yeah. Please continue to pray for us and for the mission and printing work. We are confident that the Lord will be providing for all the needs of the work as he always does. But humanly speaking, 
There will be challenging months ahead. Thank you again for all your prayers and support. May our sovereign God bless you abundantly, Brother Raul. Pray for you. Yeah. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for our missionaries. We thank you for Brother Raul and the Romanian missions there and the work that they're doing and, and the great zeal that they have for spreading the gospel. We pray that you would continue to be with them and give them uh, courage and strength as they continue to work there. We pray especially for those brethren that he's talking about in Peru and the ones that are suffering because of this uh, pandemic. Also, we hear of many in Brazil that are having uh, uh, much difficulties and that there, there is a, a new uh, round of this, this virus going around. We pray, Lord, that you would protect your people, you'd watch over them and bless them and keep them uh, from getting sick and from, from uh, dying from this virus. We thank you, Lord, for uh, your missionaries wherever they are. We pray that you continue to watch over them and bless them. Thank you for Grace Baptist Church. We pray that you continue to watch over it and bless it. Bless our pastor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.